All right. <clears throat> hey, well, welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number 20. And today we are going to go over conditionally re asking for more information when calling your backend RPG programs from Nitro App Builder apps. So first I'm gonna log in portal. All right, I'm gonna launch App Builder. Okay, so we already have a, a data source that we created for one of our older developer diary sessions and then 18. So we're just gonna reuse that same one. And what we're gonna attempt to do here is that <clears throat> based on a customer, uh, let's say we're gonna send an invoice. Um, if, that cus if we don't have an email address for that customer, then we're gonna have to ask the user for the email address. Otherwise, if we have the email address, the backend would just send the invoice. So that would be the condition of like, sometimes asking for more information and sometimes not. So let's first quickly just create a widget. And also if there's any questions um, or if for some reason my audio is not working well or anything, please just hit us up in the chat. Okay, quickly create a grid. Um, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this. I'll just do uh, city, state and country, sure. So let me just change. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I know that for this demonstration, I'm going to probably, I, I don't know, I might need to search, I don't know, but I'm going to add searching just in case. And we don't need paging on, so we'll just save this. And I'm going to tag it with all the values 20, save. And there we go. Okay. All right, now that we have this data source and grid widget, we're just going to create our app and I'm going to go to the app section, hit our plus sign, and we're just going to use this new widget we just created customer listing. And let's give it a title. <clears throat> Email. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so really what we want to be able to do is user clicks a customer to email an invoice um, and then determine if we need to ask for that email address or not. So we're simply just gonna go right into behaviors and on our grid widget, we have our row click behavior and we're gonna add a call RPG program. And the program is DD20 that we created and Sean's here and he will, he'll show that backend program at, at, at some point. Um, I'm gonna ask Sean, action for this one is? Uh, check for email. Check for email. And I'm just gonna save this quickly because I know that I need to create an app variable. And Sean, what, what, what's the app variable the back end we'll be looking for? Prompt for email. Prompt for email. I'm not gonna set a default initial value to this or anything. We just need that app variable there. Let's go back to behaviors. <clears throat> okay, so first on the row click, we're calling this one program and passing action check for email. On success, we wanna do something, which is now we wanna send the email. So we're gonna call them, so we're, this is demonstrating a nested call. So we're gonna call that same program with a different action, okay? So same program, DD20. This action is send invoice. Send invoice, okay. And here is where we wanna say, yeah, prompt user for more information, okay? Um, and then let's add a field and we're gonna just call it email. Parameter name is email, and we're going to change the type 
to email. Here's the option where we're gonna, it's gonna determine based on if that app variable is true, it will show that field, otherwise it won't. So we're gonna pick our prompt for email and this will be getting adjusted by the previous call from the RPG program. We're gonna say it's required. I'll just throw a length of 50. <clears throat> okay, so um, that's it. Let's just hit save and save again. And let's save this email invoice and let's give it a tag BD20. All right, <clears throat> now that that app is created, we should see it on our launch pad and we do, let's launch it. And before, should I bring up file letter and just go over? Yeah. So before this, we cre created a, a new table just for this demo. And it is cust email. C U S email, sorry. So right now we just have one customer that we have an email address for, and it's customer number one. Otherwise, we don't have an email address. So in reality, if you're clicking to send an invoice for a customer outside of being number one, we're going to need to get that email address before we can send the invoice. So if we go back to the running app, I'm going to click on number three. And we get the request to, okay, we need the email address. So I'll just put my, hit okay. And you see in, invoice has been sent to and the email address it was sent to. Now, if I click on number one, in reality, we shouldn't see that prompt asking for an email because we already have it. Let's click it and see, not prompted, but we did get that same response with that support at cnxcorp.com. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to point out before we go into the RPG section of it, that you can have non-conditional items in your, you know, requesting more information when you're calling your RPG program. So in reality, you could say, let me go down here on my call, I can add another field that's not based on an app variable. So that, that field and that prompt would always come up and then this field or these other fields might not show based on if they're linked to an app variable, dependent on an app variable. And that app variable must be equal to true, okay? Sean, do you think it's probably a good time for you to? Sure. Okay. All right, Sean's gonna jump in and show the RPG behind that for the DD20. And I'm gonna stop sharing and and Sean should be able to share a screen. I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Hopefully everybody can hear me. All right, so the name of the uh, the RPG program that uh, Johnny put for the uh, for the two calls it was it was the DD twenty program, and you know if you're familiar with App Builder Builder already, you would know that you know this this was copied from template EX NAB BTN EX NAB button, so I just copied that and renamed it to DD twenty, <clears throat> so. Let's just take a look. So if you're familiar already, you know, you know, this is always there. We never touch this. We just start at the process procedure. And if you remember, Johnny put an action for both calls. And if I want to pull the action, I just use VB and char action and I'm pulling it into a variable. And the first action was check for email. So let's just see what this is doing. So I just created a simple procedure here, check for email. And all we're doing here is we're getting the customer number from the row that was clicked. 
Um, you know, this if, if 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 there were multiple rows, we were allowing multiple selections. You know, then I would loop through this, and you know, I, my get selection would be one, two, three, four, five. But there's only one row clicked, so I'm just getting the the value of Cusno. And then we're just checking that simple file we created, that Cus email, just seeing if I have a record. If I have a record. I'm setting that app variable that was created on the front end prompt for email to false. Otherwise, I'm setting it to true. So when we set it to false, like in the in the case of customer number one, that's why we didn't get a prompt. And if I set it to true, as in the case for every other customer, um, that's why we're we're seeing that prompt for email. Uh, then the next action was send invoice and we're not actually sending an invoice. We're just pulling the email. So first I'm checking to see was an email address passed down. That would be the case if we did prompt for the email. If it if it's blank, then I would just assume that the prompt didn't take place. We already have the email address on file. So now I'm just going in and using a simple SQL statement to pull the email address. Then I'm just setting a response and that's why we see that little pop up invoice has been sent to and then the name of the email address. And then you just want to point out then we're always sending back no matter what was sent, but no matter what action we're doing the set response of success true. And if we look back at that app builder program, we saw that on the success of true that's when we're making that second call. So if I didn't pass this, we would have never made that second call. And that's as far as the RPG that's it. We had a, a question from a, uh, a theory asked, could, could you also retrieve the email address and set it as a default on the prompt? Could you default the prompt with an, oh, I see. So Almost like that. I see. So yeah, so I find, I, I find a, um, I find an email address and I still want a prompt, but I default the value and currently no, you couldn't do that. But you know, yeah, that's a good uh, good suggestion, though, and I'm sure something will uh, <laughs> add add into the product. So yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it back over to Johnny here. I'm gonna stop my sharing unless anybody has any questions about the uh, the RPG code here. Otherwise, I'm just gonna hand it back over to Johnny. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think that that's really what we wanted to show for today. Uh, just conditional prompt uh, items in your prompt or not prompting at all. Um, as always, if you have any questions or issues, um, you can always post those on our forms and you can get to that from our main website. Just going to our forms link. And here's our forms, you know, for based on the framework that you're currently using. And then, as always, this will be recorded and on our YouTube channel with all of our other developer diaries. And also, I should notate that our developer diaries are indexed on our forms. So number 20 will eventually be there within the next couple of days. And if you are looking for something specific, kind of you can drill in and go directly to that spot of that developer diary session where we're doing something. You know, Ivona's indexed those for us really nicely. So that's it for today. If there's, unless there's some other questions out there. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for everybody for joining. And then if you're watching on the recording, we'll uh, see you next time for Developer Diaries 21. Thanks. Oh, wait. Hold on. We just got a chat. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks.